الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلام حي على حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Ya kan stay 
Those who have a covering over their eyes and have resolved that they will never believe, such people fail to observe any of God Almighty's signs of support. And this has always been the way of the deniers of prophets. That is, that despite witnessing the signs, they demand that further signs are displayed. Allah the Almighty sets a seal on their hearts because of their excessive wrongdoing. And then they are unable to accept the truth. And Allah the Almighty sometimes makes them a sign of warning for others. This was also the state of the opponents of the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, who continued to reject and ignore all of his signs out of stubbornness even though they were able to witness them. Also, some of the chiefs among the disbelievers became signs of admonishment for others. <coughs> the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, has detailed numerous signs that were fulfilled in his support. And he has also mentioned various prophecies of the Holy Prophet ﷺ and explained how these signs have come to pass. Yet, religious leaders chose to deny these signs and lead other people astray, and they continue to do so to this day. At different occasions, the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, has outlined various signs in his favor to demonstrate the truthfulness of the movement by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. The promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, has expounded that some of these were deemed to be signs by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And one such sign is the lunar and solar eclipses. The promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam says that before the fulfillment of this sign, the Muslim clerics would raise a huge fuss and would recount the hadith relating to this. Yet, after this sign was fulfilled, not just once, but twice, firstly in India and then on a second occasion in America, and these very clerics disregarded what they themselves believed to be a sign. However, they could not deny the sign outright because it was clearly displayed. But they succumbed to obstinacy. The promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, states, I was informed by an acquaintance that during the lunar eclipse, a Muslim cleric named Ghulam Murtaza hit himself on his thigh. I, he expressed deep grief and anguish and said, Now the world has gone astray. The promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, Imagine, was he a great well-wisher for the world than God Almighty himself? 
Similarly, there are many other signs of the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wassalam, such as the plague, the sign of rivers flowing onto one another, prophecies of the Holy Quran, prophecies of populations being brought together, the sign of mountains being cut open, the sign of the publication of books and newspapers, and the sign of new modes of transport. In short, the Promised Messiah alayhi salatu wassalam, has described so many signs which were foretold by the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Muslim radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was once explaining that people level criticism towards the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wassalam instead of testifying to the signs that appear in his favor. And often they have very trivial and meaningless allegations that are quite absurd. Hazrat Muslim radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says, the promised Messiah alayhi salam displays sign after sign and yet people will come and say, how can he be the Messiah when his turban is not straight? Such were the objections raised against him. As a Muslim, the promised Messiah showed miracles after miracles. But still, there were some who would say that he could not pronounce certain letters properly. And so, how can he be deemed the Messiah? Despite displaying so many signs, others would say that since he has prepared jewelry for his wife and he uses almond, how can we accept him as the Messiah? And so these were the types of criticisms raised. As the Muslim says, do not close your eyes to the signs of God. Many people would come to the promised Messiah and say to him, Let's show us a sign. The promised Messiah would reply, You wish for more signs, but have you availed from the signs already shown? When you have not benefited from thousands of other signs that have been displayed, how will any new sign be helpful to you? Thus, such people are destined to always deprive themselves and remain deprived. There is one such very powerful and great sign that we see being fulfilled every day, which the promised Messiah explaining says that in the book Brahine Allah the Almighty teaches me a prayer in the form of a revelation. That is, leave me not alone and form a community. The Promised Messiah salam, translated as himself from Arabic to Urdu. Elsewhere, the Promised Messiah salam, states, That is, Allah the Almighty will provide you himself the necessary resources for the guests who will come to you from all directions. And Allah the Almighty also stated that guests will come to you from every distant part of China. As a Muslim Allah says, this prophecy was made 26 years ago from when he was referring to this and continues to be fulfilled in glorious fashion up until today. This is a prophecy relating to the progress of the Ahmadiyya community and we observe how this prophecy is still being fulfilled in all its splendor even now. It is a powerful evidence of the truthfulness of the promised Messiah that every single day his community grows and advances and its members excel in financial sacrifices. However, only those can observe this who see and perceive, but those who shut their eyes cannot see this. I shall present some extracts of Hazrat Muslim himself, where he discusses prophecies of the promised Messiah relating to the means to the victory of Ahmadiyya and also the progress of the community.
that we will enter this house with a combination of the Hasni and Husseini ways. And everyone is aware that Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu obtained his success through peace and reconciliation. While Hazrat Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu obtained his success through shahad by martyrdom. Thus, certainly the promised Messiah alayhi salatu was told that the Ahmadiyya community would certainly reach the status of Nizamuddin. However, this would occur through both peace, love and compassion, but also through martyrdoms and sacrifices. If anyone thinks that this movement will progress without love, peace and sympathy, then they are wrong. And similarly, they are also wrong who believe that this movement will advance without sacrifices and martyrs. At times, we will have to adopt peace and harmony, and sometimes we will need to adopt the Husseini way, which means that we can lay down our lives before the opponents, but we will never give in to them. Both these approaches take precedence for us. Neither the Masihi approach alone and nor the Mahdiriyat approach alone are our preference. Rather, we will have to walk upon a middle path. There will be one victory achieved through love, harmony and peace and one victory through sacrifices. It is after that that the community will enter Nizamuddin. And we observe that today members of the Jamaat present the examples in both these respects. We give a message of love, compassion and peace. And also it is the community alone that is giving sacrifices. In a further reference to the same revelation to the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu was salam, Hazrat Muslim Maud radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, that there is a house near to the Mubarak Masjid, the house of Mirza Nizamuddin, and we will enter it through a combination of the Husni and Husseini approach. Many people were surprised by what the meaning could be of this revelation. Hazrat Muslim says, I heard from the promised Messiah himself that the immediate meaning of this revelation is not evident. However, with time it will become clear. Hazrat Muslim says that the promised Messiah declared at a time when he was completely alone and had no followers. But God Almighty had informed him that his community would be given so much success and progress that in comparison other nations will become like the nomadic people of today. We witness new signs of the divine succor of God Almighty on a daily basis. And God willing, we shall indeed witness days such as these. And our members will progress so much that other nations will become insignificant in comparison. However, it is essential to inculcate the true spirit of faith within us as well as our progeny. 
اور اپنی نسلوں کے اندر بھی بلکہ ایمان کو مضبوط کرتی ہیں ایمان میں اضافے کا باعث بنتی ہیں چند دن ہوئے ربا میں جو یہی This is because Ahmadis encourage to inculcate the fear of God in one's hearts. Because Ahmadis say that the fear of God is in the heart of God. Allah Ta'ala says that Ahmadis encourage the fear of God and warn others to fear the wrath of God. Allah Ta'ala says that they say that Allah Ta'ala is in the heart of God. عقل دے محفوظ نہیں ان کو بھی اتنی ضرورت دے کہ بجائے اینڈ اسپیشل فورس وچ کمبیٹس ٹیرزم ہیو دا کریج ٹو ویج وار اگینسٹ دوز انڈیویجولس فرام ہوز ہینڈس آرڈنری ممبرز آف دا پبلک آر ناٹ سیف ملک سے ہاتھوں عوام کی جانے بھی محفوظ نہیں In addition, they should arrest those people who are ransacking the country by all means possible. Ahmadis should pray for God Almighty to safeguard Pakistan and free it from the clutches of these times. As for sacrifices, then Ahmadis will always offer sacrifices and will continue to do so. And God willing, He will show us the fruits of these sacrifices. 
اور ان قربانیوں کو اللہ ان شاء اللہ تعالیٰ ان In Punjabi, there is a proverb that the greatest adversary is a close relative. Therefore, the greatest adversaries are usually the close relatives and loved ones because they cannot bear to see someone from their own rise up and earn respect and fame in the world. How can those who quarrel with that individual over the smallest piece of land tolerate the, na- the notion that the whole world will flock to him. And so, for this reason, they try the utmost to quell him. To the extent that when they are left frustrated at the fact that they are powerless to do anything, then they attempt to vent all the anger and resentment. As a Muslim old state, as a Khalifa al Masih I, Rati Allah Ta'ala Anhu, would often say that from among the rulers of Shahpur, one of the chiefs received the title of Khan Bahadur, i.e. the valiant one. He was one of the chiefs and received his title. And a poor lady who belonged to the same family named her son as Khan Bahadur. She was asked about this as to why she used this name. She replied, I do not know what he will choose to be when he is older. However, just as others call his relative Khan Bahadur, they would also call him by the same name. Therefore, those who cannot achieve anything themselves simply take on the name so that at least they have the same name as the person who was able to achieve great feats. As a Muslim further states, when the promised Messiah made his claim, a relative of his also claimed to be the Imam Mahdi. This is regarding the close relatives. His relative thought that now since the promised Messiah has made a claim and the people would turn their attention towards him, Therefore, I should also make a claim. As a Muslim then presents a Persian proverb, which means that every individual's vision and understanding is governed by his strength and judgment. As a Muslim states, that the promised Messiah claims that he has been sent by God for the entire world as an arbitrator. And he has not only been sent for a common man, rather it is incumbent upon even the great kings to accept him. However, the relative who made the same claim was simply taking on the title. Among the promised Messiah's relatives, there was one who made a claim to be the Imam of the Sweetness. And on the other hand, the promised Messiah wrote to such an extent that it is even incumbent upon the sovereign of England to accept it. For that reason, he wrote a letter to the Queen of England, who was the ruler at the time. In comparison, the bravery of the one who claimed to be the Imam of the Sweepers and his followers was such that when a policeman asked him whether he had made any claim, he replied, I have made no claim whatsoever. Somebody must have made a false claim of their own accord. As the Muslim says, relatives are the worst adversaries. As the Muslim further states, close relatives are the greatest antagonists. Close ones, especially when they become opponents, cause the greatest enemy. And subsequently, they use every method, whether it is legal or illegal, to cause harm to them. Having mentioned this, as the Muslim states, 
Dozens of our relatives have severe ties with us due to Ahmadiyya, not because we do not wish to meet them, rather they do not wish to meet with us. Our relatives would hurl verbal abuse at us, and our elder aunt, Muslim our our elder aunt, who later accepted Ahmadiyya, would hurl abuse at us and insult us. I remember clearly on one occasion when I was approximately six years old, I was climbing up the stairs and she saw me and repeatedly said in Punjabi that the son is equally as evil as the father. She repeated this statement so many times that I memorized it. When I reached home and I narrated this incident and inquired as to the meaning of the statement, I was told that it means and that just as the father is evil, the son is evil all the same. As a Muslim in Qadian, there was a boycott imposed upon the promised Messiah. People were stopped from completing the chores connected with his house, and the people who practiced pottery were also stopped. The sweepers were prevented from cleaning near his house. Our beloved brother, the sister-in-law of the promised Messiah and along with other relatives, to the extent that his paternal uncle's son, called Ali Sher, were all involved in causing him pain and anger. As a Muslim outfather states that on one occasion, seven brothers from the area of Gujarat came to visit Qadiyan and used the path that led to a garden which was attributed to belong to the promised Messiah and Islam. They visited the garden as it belonged to the promised Messiah and Islam. En route, they came across one of our relatives who was arranging his garden. He inquired from them, are you the guest travelers, of where they came from and what business they had there. And the guests who were visiting from Gujarat said, we have come from Gujarat and have come to meet Hazrat Mirza Sahib. He said, Hear me well, I am his uncle's son and know full well how he is and said all kinds of things against the promised Messiah. From among the brothers, one of them stepped forward and grabbed onto him. He then shouted to his brothers to come quickly. The relative of the promised Messiah was shaken up by this. The Ahmadi then said, I am not going to hit you as you are the relative of the promised Messiah. However, I wish to show my brothers your face, as we had heard that Satan is hidden. However, today we have come to know that he looks like you. As the Muslim Allah further states, the promised Messiah was informed that apart from his progeny, all other progenies of his family members shall terminate. And there was a lot of opposition. However, Allah the Almighty assured the promised Messiah and told him that his progeny shall continue while the progeny of all others from his family will cease to exist. And this is precisely what happened. Now, only those members of the promised Messiah remain who entered into the fold of Ahmadiyya, and the progeny of all others has finished. At the time of the promised Messiah's claim, there were around 70 male members in the family, but now apart from those who are among the physical progeny of the promised Messiah, as well as being a part of his spiritual progeny, no one has any issue of their own. Despite the fact that they did their utmost in trying to destroy the promised Messiah's name and exhausted their efforts in doing so, but ultimately they themselves were destroyed and their progeny also terminated. This indeed is another sign of the promised Messiah and the Hisrat's truthfulness. Then, narrating the instant when the promised Messiah and elder aunt did the bad. Hazrat Muslim anhu states, Even though certain prophecies and signs appear very small, however, if one carefully ponders over them, then many aspects come to light which become a means of increasing one's faith. Hazrat Muslim anhu further states, I only came to learn of one of the promised Messiah's revelation yesterday. And although it is related to one person and regarding their particular situation, However, it consists of many prophecies. Many friends mentioned that they already knew about it, but I only learned of it yesterday. Yesterday, after the demise of our elder aunt, Sheikh Yaqub Ali Sahib stated that a very old revelation of the promised Messiah is that the elder aunt came. This was a senior aunt of his Muslim anhu, and was the wife of the promised Messiah Sahib's elder brother. Sheikh Yaqub Ali Sahib states 
The elder Ahmadi members relate that at the time they were not able to fully understand its meaning. Everyone had their own interpretations of it. However, a very simple and straightforward meaning could be that a lady will come whose relation is that of an aunt. And by coming, this could mean one of two things. She will either physically come or she will enter the community. For someone to physically come does not signify a prophecy because relatives often come to visit. All of us at the time used to call the wife of the promised Messiah elder brother Tai, Tai's senior aunt. In other words, her name was Tai. Those who have read the literature of the community will know that during the time of the prophecy regarding Muhammad she, Tai, Tai, fiercely opposed. And one of the reasons for this was because she was the most senior in the family and the prophecy was made about her sister's daughter. And so, being a leader of the family at the time, she considered it her duty to try and cause a hindrance in their relation, which otherwise would have been a source of humiliation for their family. And so, she considered her duty to oppose this. Hazrat Muslim that it is in the nature of elderly women that they consider the honor and respect of the family to be far more significant than religious matters, in fact even more important than governance and any other issues. At that time, the promised Messiah claim claimed to be the Messiah was not as important to Tai to Tai as was the honor of the family. Also, it is rather difficult for the elder to obey one who is younger. And the promised Messiah was younger than his Tai, by his elder aunt. Moreover, the promised Messiah did not take any share in the inheritance, and therefore his food and other provisions would be provided from her house. And thus, in this regard, she considered herself as a benefactor to the promised Messiah. Women naturally have this feeling, therefore she considered the promised Messiah to be dependent on her. This was not because the promised Messiah did not take any share from the inheritance and that all the wealth was with her. In fact, she felt that the promised Messiah was dependent on her and that she was his benefactor because she was the one who would send food and bear all the expenses. The promised Messiah was right in an Arabic couplet. اپنے ایک عربی شعر میں فرماتے ہیں کہ لفاظات المواعد کانا او کلی وسرت الیوم مت عامل which means that there was a time when i would make do on the leftovers of others but now god almighty has bestowed such honor upon me that thousands eat from my spread god نے مجھے ایسی شان عطا کی ہے this couplet also points to the fact that the promised Messiah والسلام's assets and wealth was in the care of his brother and was not separate. The promised Messiah did not pay any attention towards looking after his own wealth. And even his father would also say that he would not be able to look after his share of wealth. Thus, in the given circumstances, it was impossible for the elder aunt, Aitai, to accept Ahmadiyya, not because of religious reasons or arguments, but due to the family circumstances, the background to which have been explained. However, later on, she did accept Ahmadiyya. As a Muslim, who further states that this was because, according to her, she felt that her relation to the promised Messiah was that of a master and a servant. Ayy the Tai, the elder aunt, considered her own status as a master and God forbid the status of the promised Messiah to be of a servant. She considered the promised Messiah to be a poor person who did not do any work and lived with their food. And so in these circumstances, she could never allow the promised Messiah to succeed in having his nikah performed with her sister's daughter. Since she was the eldest, therefore she opposed greatly against it. In those days, there was intense opposition against the promised Messiah, and members from his own family had stopped meeting him, and the promised Messiah would also not meet him. The opposition from the members of his family was so severe that our mother, Hazrat Amajan, that there was an elderly lady from the maternal side of the family who would lament that they are not allowed to even see the son of Chiravdi. The promised Messiah would be kept isolated from everyone as if he were a bandit or thief and was considered to have tarnished the family honor. In such circumstances, it would seem impossible for the Tai by the elder to accept Ahmadiyya. 
Although one can have a change of heart, however, for this it is necessary to assess the circumstances. And in such circumstances, the promised Messiah received the revelation that the elder aunt came. At the time, the Tai, i.e. the elder aunt, was the wife of the promised Messiah's elder brother and therefore was his sister-in-law in relation. Therefore, the words of the revelation point out to the fact that she will do the bad at a time when her relation to the person taking the bad will be that of an elder aunt. If she was taking the bad in the lifetime of the promised Messiah, then the words of the revelation should have been the sister-in-law because she was the promised Messiah's sister-in-law and so the revelation should have been according to that. If she were to do the bad during the time of the first Khalifa, then the revelation should have been a lady from the promised Messiah's family. However, the word Tai, Ai Elder, alludes to the fact that she will do the bad when the promised Messiah's son becomes the Khalifa. However, if no one was going to become a Khalifa from the progeny of the promised Messiah, then to use the word Tai was of no significance. As a Muslim mode further states, this revelation contains three prophecies. Firstly, there will be a Khalifa from the progeny of the promised Messiah. Secondly, the Tai, i.e. the elder aunt, will accept Ahmadiyya during that time. And thirdly, there is a prophecy regarding the age of Tai Sayyid, i.e. the elder aunt, because the promised Messiah salam's own age was almost 70 at the time, and he was prophesizing about a lady who was much older than him, and that she will still be alive and will do the bad at the hand of his son, who shall become a Khalifa. For someone to live that long is indeed an extraordinary thing. Let alone an elderly woman, a human mind cannot even say this regarding a young person. The Tai, the elder, passed away around 1927. Thus, for her to do the bad, and that too during my time, when one of the sons of the promised Messiah is the Khalifa, is an extraordinary sign. And so in just these two words, there are many prophecies which have been mentioned. As the Muslim of Allah further states that after accepting Ahmadiyyat, the Tai I.D. Eldan also signed up to the institution of Al-Masir and this also has a very extraordinary background to it. He states, in view of the customs and sentiments of traditional families, this was indeed an extraordinary transformation that Tai, by the elder aunt, joined the institution of Al-Basir after doing the bad. Not only did she do the bad, but she also did have a seed. Initially, the, she opposed the promised Messiah salam's burial in the ancestral graveyard and said that he should instead be buried elsewhere. In fact, she even sent a message stating that the promised Messiah salam should not be buried in the ancestral graveyard and be buried somewhere else because this would be a mark of disrespect. And for several years she remained adamant on this. But then the stance changed so dramatically and she did the wasiyat <coughs> and was buried in the heavenly grave. For any reasonable person, this in fact is a great sign. And though it may seem as something very ordinary, but there are multiple aspects to prove one's truth. Which is that despite the fact that she opposed the promised Messiah's buried in the ancestral graveyard, however later she did the wasiyat and was buried in the heavenly graveyard. Relating the time when the promised Messiah traveled to Delhi, Hazrat Muslim a person who places his trust in Allah the Almighty can never entertain any doubt in the outcome of God's works. If one has trust in Allah the Almighty, then surely Allah the Almighty will produce the right results. Hazrat Muslim states further, I was a young child when the promised Messiah traveled to Delhi. As a Muslim of Allah was addressing the Jamaat in Delhi at the time. He states, I was a very young child at the time when the promised Messiah traveled to Delhi. The promised Messiah visited the graves of some of the saints and prayed extensively. The promised Messiah stated, the reason why I prayed is so that the souls of these saints become impassioned, lest their progenies become deprived from recognizing the spiritual light which Allah the Almighty has sent down in this day and age as a source for guidance. He stated, indeed, that day shall come when Allah the Almighty will open their hearts and enable them to accept the truth. 
ان لوگوں کے دل کو قبول کریں گے اب تک میرے لیے باقی ہے جماعت ہے ڈیزائرز ٹو وٹنس دی فروٹس اف دی ایفرٹس اپنی کو شو دی شوڈ پلیس دی ٹرسٹ ان اللہ دی مائٹی شورلی دیٹ ڈے ول کم سو دیٹ وچ گاڈ وانٹس ٹو اسٹیبلش شال کم ٹو پاس کہ جس چیز کو خدا قائم کرنا چاہتا ہے حضرت مسلم اور رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ مینشن دس ان رسپانس ٹو کوسچن وائل ایڈریسنگ دی جماعت ان دہلی موسیقی In continuation to this, Hazrat Muslim Ad Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu also mentioned a dream of the Promised Messiah Alayhi Salaam. Hazrat Muslim Ad Salaam, the Promised Messiah Alayhi Salaam saw in a vision that there is a very long hollow pit that has been dug up and many sheep have been laid upon it and a butcher stood at the head of each sheep with a knife in his hand. ready to sleep they are all looking up at the sky as if waiting for a command aur aasman ki taraf uski nazar hai promise messiah alaihi salatu was i was also walking at the same site and when near the mosque say to the believers is mukam for your prayer to him my lord would not take ja kar maine kaha and they immediately ran their lives when the sheep shuddered the butchers said to them that what are you jab wo bheede tadpi You are nothing but sheep that eat dirt. Hazrat Muslim Al Razi Allah Taala Anhu states that seventy thousand people died due to cholera in those days. Therefore, if someone does not pay heed, then why would God care for him? His affairs cannot stop. They will happen surely. اس کے کام رک نہیں سکتے حضرت مسلم رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ سٹیٹس دی کرسچینٹی پروگرس 300 ایئرز افٹر دی ایڈوینٹ آف دی کرسچین سائیکل ہاؤ سال بعد ہاؤ ایور لوکنگ ایٹ اور سرکمسٹانسز ون کین ڈیڈیوس دیٹ احمدیت وی پروگرس مچ سونر دین دی ٹائم آف دی کرسچین سائیکل مسیح ناسی کے زمانے سے بہت پہلے ان شاء اللہ تعالی احمدیت کو ترقی حاصل ہو جائے گی and so whether they are pakistani clerics or some religious leaders pakistani or they are worldly powers they do not have any status in the sight of allah the almighty they are like sheep and these people can never hinder the progress of the ahmadiyya movement aur ye log kabhi bhi ahmadiyat ki tarakki mein rok nahi ban sakte however we cannot rely solely on our missionaries for this purpose that they do to believe and spread ahmadiyya hum apne If we are to become a part of this progress, and we should become part of it, then we will have to also focus our attention towards prayer. And we will have to increase our spirituality, and we will have to strengthen our relationship with Allah the Almighty. And these are the things that will end the opposition of the Jamal and will enable us to become those who partake in the progress of Ahmadiyyat. Inshallah, may Allah the Almighty grant us that status. After the Friday prayers, I will also lead a funeral prayer in absentia of respected Sufni Zafar Ahmed Sahib, who is a missionary in Indonesia. On the 8th of November, he passed away. due to a heart attack inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun surely to Allah we belong and to him shall we return he was 71 years of age he was born in Padang Sumatra his father Zaini Balan Sahib joined the Jamaat in 1923 after taking oath of allegiance on the hand of Hazrat Muslim of Razi Allah Ta'ala Anna Sahib in 1923 His father established headquarters of the Jumaat in Sumatra and Java with the help of two other young men. Similarly, Sufni Sahib's father was amongst the pioneer missionaries of Indonesia. Zaini Dalan Sahib had three children, out of whom he devoted Sufni Zafar Ahmed Sahib and sent him to Jamia and Yarabwa to obtain further education. Sufni Zafar Ahmed Sahib departed for Rabwa on 17th July 
He stayed in Rabwa for approximately 11 years and he received education in Jamia Hindia Rabwa. In 1974, he returned to Indonesia after his graduation from Jamia Hindia and his first posting was in Kalimantan. After that, he continued to serve in Indonesia as a regional mission in West Java and as a regional president. After that, he was also able to serve in East Java and Papua. He served as a regional missionary from 1985 to 1987 in Jambi and from 1987 to 1991 in North Sumatra. From 1991 to 1997, he served as a teacher in Jamia and Indonesia and taught Tika and during this time he was also appointed to serve as the in charge of the department that looked after the training of the army. From 1997 to 2001, he was appointed as a regional missionary in Lampung. Many chapters of the Jamaat were established in Indonesia through him, as well as the construction of mosques and mission houses. He was able to write the following four books in the Indonesian language, Philosophy of Zakat, Sacrifice in the Way of God the Almighty, Funeral and Meaning of Jihad in Islam. He wrote these four books. In 2001 he retired and was suffering from various illnesses from some time. He had a relationship of unconditional loyalty, love and immense obedience with Khilafat. He was a very sincere and devoted servant of the movement. Apart from his wife, he has left behind one daughter and two sons. May Allah the Almighty keep them steadfast upon Ahmadiyya and may he enable them to increase in virtuous deeds and express loyalty like their father. And may he make them an example of the Alhamdulillah, in Ahmadu, in a stay no, in a stock peru, when no men obey, when a tawakalo, when all the billah, him in Shurian for Sena, women say, من يعده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Ibad Allah, Rahimakum Allah, Inna Allah, Yamur, Biladli, Walisani, Waita, Izil Kurba, Wayanha, Nilfasha, Walmunkar, Walbari. يَعِذُكُمْ وَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ اذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ يَذْكُرْكُمْ وَدُوهُ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ